Uh, testing, testing. Um, I should probably not say anything inappropriate, but for twelve thousand five hundred dollars, where we're asking twelve for. So I this was about three hundred fifty dollars. I think we had uh, just five thousand dollars. Definitely got the coin. What's up, man? Yeah, of course. You mind if my dinosaur's in the picture? No, I'm saying I don't. That's your bike. I'm about to Hello. I'd like to just do the intro in front of the big sign. This is like a good spot. But yeah, you can see it in the background there, huh? As long as you got a good shot, as long as you can see the sign behind my big head, that's all that really matters. Aloha, top of the morning friends and family. Today we're at the National Reptile Breeders Expo in Daytona, Florida, and we're gonna wander around this show and see what people are selling at the show so you guys can know too what people are selling at the show. Let's go. Simple as that. While I was hanging out, Bob uh, Vu was hanging out in the ice cream line and I went in there and we got some ice cream and Bob paid for my ice cream. So I think we're gonna go check out Bob's booth first, just for that. If, if you guys know me, you know that ice cream is the weight of my heart for sure. So we'll, we'll go do that. I don't even know if Bob's at his table, but howdy. I mean, hopefully Bob's at his table, but probably Bob is sleeping. So we'll see if he's sleeping or if he's at work. He's probably got a bunch of people working in his booth and he's not even there. Oh, look, no, I was wrong. Bob's in there. Come on, come on back. I think we have, I think we're okay. Uh, how is that burrito treating you, sir? I'm trying to get on video doing though. It's a solid bite. As soon as Bob is uh, finished uh, talking to all his fans and we'll maybe get a second in with Bob. We already got JT taking a massive bite of burrito. So I mean, for all intents and purposes, we can probably end this, vi end this video right now and it'll do as better than any videos ever done on our channel. But we just got to put that on repeat. <laughs> oh, that's the mic. I don't mic. Hell yeah. Um, what up? Uh, testing, testing. Um, I should probably not say anything inappropriate, but we're we're going around the show today, and we're going to ask people what's their best animal on the table. Uh, I think my best animals on the table is project animals. So we have like some desert ghost clown head azantic stuff. Hold on, hold on. You're getting ahead of ourselves. No. Best animal. Oh yes. I'm gonna go with desert ghost clown head azantic. Can we see it? Sure, of course. All right. We're gonna we're gonna look at the animal. We're gonna maybe even touch the animal. You brought four of them. Yeah. So even trying to get best animal, he's got best animals, even if I just try to narrow it down to one. Oh. Okay, so tell me again. So these are our Pastel Desert Ghost Clown Het VPI Azantics. What is it about this that makes it the best animal on your table? In my opinion, uh, the future of ball python, uh, as far as breeders goes, is double recessive and triple recessive combos. And this is a key element for those projects. This is going to produce a black and white animal that ages exactly as it hatches. So I think in the, down the future for ball pythons, we want to produce animals that the day they come out of the egg is how they look like at 3,000 grams. That's the goal for the industry, in my opinion. Yeah, no, that's a solid opinion. Um, so does this animal, this bonus question, does this animal also happen to be the most expensive animal on the table? Um, is this a, no, it is not. It is not. Yeah, this animal is on the table for $12,500. Yeah. All right, and it's not the most expensive animal, so there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks, awesome. Bob. Yeah, man. Appreciate you, bro. Yeah. All right, we got we got a ball python right off the bat. I know there's a second room at this show that is actually ball python free zone. We might head in there for a second video, uncut with Dave Kaufman later. How about that? Oh, you know, I got an important thing I got to bring up bring up here. This is Shane, our esteemed cameraman right here. Shane, say hello to the people. What's going on? Um, if you ever have an issue, Shane. Just let me know. We'll take care of it. If the issue is not being able to focus on your face, just touch the screen back here. It'll focus. Not the big screen, but the small screen. It'll touch focus. <laughs> okay, we got a ball python. I'd like to get something other than a ball python now. All right, real quick before you check out more animals, one thing that I've been mentioning to you guys recently is that it seems that out of all the people that watch these videos, over half of you, for whatever reason, are not subscribed. So if you're really enjoying this style of content, we'd really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. It really helps out the channel, it turns out. So. Thank you if you do that. Appreciate it. All right, we're here at Roush. Oh, hi there. 
we're here at Ralph's Reptiles. Josh, today what we're doing, we're running around, we're asking everybody what their best animal is on the table. Do you have Ooh, one? Ooh, best animal? Um, I'm pretty fond of these, um, these black rats I have over here in the Texas Indigos. I'm not sure which one I'd call the best, but um, these Texas Indigos are freaking awesome. And our black rats down there are like solid and huge and just really cool, so. All right, if we were gonna do like a quick nuclear bomb, mini nuclear bomb right here at Ralph's Trippers and everything was gonna blow up except for one of them, which one is the one you're gonna save? That's a hard question. What, what are other people saying? Is, are they answering it pretty quickly? Um, no, so far we've only done one and we, uh, he, had, he had trouble narrowing down to one animal, but he had like, even when he did one animal, he actually had four of this one animal, so it was not, anyway, um, people are, have not been put on the spot like you are yet. Okay, um, I'd say the Texas Indigos and there are five of them. <laughs> <laughs> We're bumping up. Yeah. All right, can we take a look? Yeah, 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 go ahead. Oh, dude. Yeah, that was the right pick in my opinion, my yeah. personal opinion. Indigo snakes are one of the coolest snakes on the planet. I mean, right, black rats are cool too, but nothing beats an indigo snake in my opinion. Yeah, indigos are awesome. I mean, every every species of indigos are great. Um, I, I, like, I really like the Mexicans, the Rubidus too. Mm -hmm. And then of course the uh, the Cooperi, the, the Easterns are really nice. But yeah, these these Westerns, um, you know, they're they're not as solid black as like the Cooperi, but they're they're like really hardy, really easy to get started. And to me, just like a better like pet snake, you know, because you, they're not like as finicky as like some of the other ones, you know, to get started. But yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of big fan of indigos. Yeah. Any dry mark on really? Yeah, me too. Um, now, does this also happen to be the most expensive animal on your table? Um, yeah, we've got a female yearling over there that we're we're asking twelve for. So I'd I'd say it's it's the most expensive one. It's probably that that yearling over there. Okay, cool, perfect. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate yeah, your time, absolutely. bro. Got bearded dragons. Got some cool lizards over here. To get in the way of his sales. There are a lot of snakes. There's snakes everywhere. I will give this guy a second to sell his gecko diet stuff and then see if we can't jump in. And I, re we, I really want to represent Florida here because we're in Florida and his thing is so flow reptiles, which is obviously South Florida reptiles. Would you mind if I, we did like a quick one minute interview? I'd be happy to, but can I get you the owner? Yeah, the owner would be great. Okay. So we got Ethan here, so flow reptiles? So flow reptiles, yes. Right on, man. Yeah. Um, we're going around today, we're asking people to show what is the best animal they have at their table. That is a very hard question. Um, oh my gosh. Can't take me anywhere. <laughs> Here it is. It's a, uh, it's a tiger stripe hypo tangerine hunter and milk snake. No, so, these guys are super, super cool. I specialize in the Hondurans, but I mean, this one just popped out and the color just gets better with age. It's a crazy looking snake. I don't know, I think you can't, there's not many other species that beat that, that vibrant, vibrant color, you know? I built a custom enclosure last week in Minnesota that was intended for a hognose snake, but I, I think that this, I was also thinking Honduran milk would really make it pop, and I think oh, this yeah. is. A... Yeah, no, these guys make, I mean, no matter what what kind of enclosure it is, I mean, you put one of these in there, people are going to be looking at it like sideways, you know. And um, we have a ton of. I actually have a, a few world's first Hondurans that should be popping out in the next year or so. And now this is milk snakes, crazy morphs. So stay tuned. Awesome, man. Does this also happen to be the most expensive snake on your table? Oh no, not at all. Not at all. Um, no, this is um, this was about three hundred and fifty dollars. I think we had. Um, I don't know if I still got them. We have a patternless pine for around 650. Um, and then we had another pine snake, a uh, patternless southern pine snake for around 1500, but that one's gone. But we're not even hatching babies yet. We're, our season's pushed back a couple months, so we'll have uh, babies in October this year. Okay. So this is all stuff that's left over from last year. It's already got size, you know, a bunch of meals in it. Um, super cool stuff, so. Cool. Perfect, then thanks man. I'll grab some B-roll that guy and then we'll be yeah. out of your hair. They had a bunch of uh, lizards on their table, so I was thinking that they would bust out a lizard, but snakes are everybody's favorite, man. Let's, but I know a place where we'll definitely get a lizard and not a snake, let's go. And it's a Florida local too, so. It's like, what are the Floridians doing? I'd say this show is probably a majority of local Floridians, like Chris over at Bulldog LLC Reptiles. We'll go check him out in a minute, even though I know he's gonna bust out a snake too. David's busy as ever. I don't know if we can bump in here for a second or not. We 
might we might be asking a lot to jump in here with David for a moment. He's, his table's pretty slammed. Everybody's actually really busy talking to customers and stuff. That's it's good. We're working too hard. <laughs> What's up, bro? How are you, bro? I'm Thank good. You so How are you? Much. You too, man. Congratulations. Yeah, okay. it was not closed all the way quite. There you go. Thank you. Don't want it to happen now. David, you got you got 90 seconds after you. Yeah, yeah, this? cool, sure. awesome. What's up, man? Oh my God, it's been busy. What is this? Oh, this is a mic. <laughs> Sick. That's a good idea. <laughs> David Ruchera, ladies and gentlemen, Tiki's Gecko is one of the yes, one of the not just Florida's but one of the nation's premier gecko breeders for sure. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. So we're just going around asking everybody what is their number one favorite animal on their table. My favorite animal on my table is a gargoyle gecko from my Deadpool line. It's a Deadpool Junior offspring, and I'll show it to you, but it's just super bright red, blotchy red, and it's just what I've been working for for a long time. You know, I've been breeding red stripes to try to refine them, and that's like one of my latest ones. Yeah. Is it, does it also have to be one of the most expensive animals on your table? It's, it's definitely one of my most expensive animals. It's $5,000. Yeah, that's nothing to sneeze at. When this thing fires up, it is basically like an all-red gecko. It's a red base, so it's actually not fired up right now. But what I love about gargoyle geckos is that they don't need to be fired up to show the red. When they when they get fired up, they show more red, but fired down, you can st still see all that red. Versus like a crested gecko, they fire down, you don't see any red anymore. So, one of my uh, favorite animals here for sure. All right, cool. We got a lizard. What would be really cool is if we got now like a like a tortoise. Let's see if we can find somebody who's just tortoises. No, it's a, uh, <laughs> it's a T Rex. <laughs> On our quest to find turtles, we should stop by Dennis McNamara's table because he's an awesome guy. I was just told I could do whatever I like here. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Dude, I'm so blessed. Uh, what is your? Sorry, we're here with Dennis McNamara. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> This is so weird. They're talking to a T-Rex, and then Matt's throwing stuff at us. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> it's, it's normal. But it's normal. Yeah, it's just this is Daytona. We're in Florida man country, and he's from Tampa, so it's what you expect. Yeah, man. So what do you say was my favorite thing? Yeah, favorite animal on your table right now. Ooh, I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> I don't know. My, I don't know. I like it all. That's the, that's the problem. Mm. That's the good thing and the bad thing. I don't know. I mean, I always like Maclots pythons. They make my life better. So I'd say Maclots pythons make... These Honduran, some of these hide, some of the, like, I like. Hold on, hold on. You said Maclots first. That's what we're going yeah, what, well, I'm curious. What, how do Maclots pythons make your life better? That's what I want to know. I don't know. I just, they have been something that I've been doing off and on for, I don't know, how old am I? 20 some years of my life. I've been breeding them every year for the last eight years in a row, something like that. I have a couple, like, it's just one of those snakes that not everybody, well, some people know about, some people don't know about. They're feisty when they're little, but they grow out of it, and they're just a super interesting looking animal. They get decent size, they're active. When you walk in the room, they check you out. They're just, I don't know, I'd say they're interactive. They're just cool, and people, and honestly, the amount of people that like them when they come and talk to you, that you sit here for 30 minutes and talk about them, I like that aspect of things. You know, because it's kind of a niche thing that makes it so like, people are like, oh, I have these, I love them, I, whatever else, or you don't see them very often, and it just makes it so you can have a conversation about something and that's really what all this is about. You know, I, I was saying this earlier, I was like, sometimes I bring stuff like these things to make space more than money in some ways, like, because you want to have something new or whatever else. And Maclots are one of those things that like, I would like to make more of than I do. So I almost want to make more space to make more of them. I make a good amount of them. I never have to advertise them. They just sell um, and they're just a cool animal. Are they the most expensive animal on your table? No. All right, perfect answer, love that. Perfect. Got him. Thanks, Dennis. Hey, man. Well, let's get to it. Thank you so much for uh, coming by. It's good to see you, buddy. Always good to see you, too, man. We're still, we're still on the mission for a tortoise. Oh, I put you in manual. Oh, you did. Look at this guy. I mean, you have to tell him what to do. He just knows how to do it. Where are we guaranteed that they're going to pick a turtle as their favorite thing? Ooh, I know exactly where. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, sir, would you like to say hello to my Dino Mike? What up, Dino Mike? Hey, what's up? It's me, Dino Mike, with the Dino Mike. Uh, I've, 
What do you know about the Civil War? Yeah, I have an anu- I'm having a danierism right now, straight up. <laughs> My fault. Yes. <laughs> hey, how much you want to bet we're going to find a turtle at bestpetturtle.com? Best, bestpetturtle.com. I can say it. <laughs> he'll, 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 he'll keep it above the waist so we're not... I mean, we're not going to show your whole... Hey, high angles, I look a little skinnier. <laughs> All right, we're here with Bryant King at bestpetturtle.com. Yep. So what is your favorite animal on your table? My favorite animal is my, uh, what I'm calling pygmy turtles. For years, they've been called African dwarf mud turtles. That's a mouthful. I call them pygmy turtles. Nice and easy. Um, and they start out a lot smaller than that, and that's as big as they get. Those black ones in there only get that big, which makes them ideal for the beginner keeper because most people want to keep a turtle in their aquarium their whole life. And too many species, even some of the other stuff I have here, they'll buy it, and if they do well with it, which is awesome, it gets so big they can't keep it in the aquarium anymore. And then you need a tub or some other setup. Now, for the guys in this room, that's great. There's guys in this room that own backhoes and can dig a pond and keep the really big stuff. But most people out there want something they can keep in an aquarium, and that's why I like these, and that's why I'm trying to produce a lot of these and get these out on the market. Awesome. Perfect, Brian. Thanks, man. Appreciate nice you. To meet you. You too. We're here at New Moon Reptiles, and we're going to pick my favorite animal at their booth. And for me, it's this lace monitor right here, Bell's Phase Lace Monitor. Just something about their personality. They're very cool looking. The nice contrast between the black and white, I've always really enjoyed. And there's, I mean, a lot of cool animals here. Don't get me wrong. I mean, there's a croc monitor. We got coming eye. We got, of course, the blue tree monitor is always really cool looking. It's not even the most expensive animal here, but it's just my favorite animal, and I, I just really enjoy them. So that's the one I'm picking. It's the first monitors we've seen at the show, so luckily there's a nice plethora of uh, species to enjoy just at one spot. It's pretty cool, very beautiful. Your company's called? Ron Cotto's Reptiles. Ron Cotto's Reptiles. Yeah, I mainly do uh, blue tongues. That's okay. really uh, what I breed. That's I have what a you... little, little side projects with some snakes and stuff like that, but mainly uh, breed blue tongue skinks. Okay. Um, here today I have uh, Northerns and I have Easterns. Easterns are still pretty rare in the U.S., um, so there's not many people at the show with Easterns. There's a few others, but there's still a uh, species that's not very popular in the United States. So, uh, what is your favorite animal on your table today? On my table today, I'd say the Eastern Blue Tongue Skinks, um, definitely, just because they're different. Um, the Northerns, like I was saying, are still common or more, pop, more, uh, more frequently available in the U.S. The Easterns are, are still, you don't, you don't see them everywhere. They just look different. Are the Easterns the most expensive animal on your table? Uh, no, I have some snakes that are more expensive, um, but there's, the Easterns are still my favorite. Yeah. Awesome. We're here with Lina at Florida Regal Jumpers, so we're asking people what their favorite animal is on their table today. Well, obviously, you know, the Regal Jumpers, they're really sweet, little, mellow little guys. Um, we've never been personally bitten by them. Um, the kids handle them. They're really, like I said, low maintenance. Um, you feed them about once a week. As they get bigger, you can go even longer. Um, and yeah, he's actually holding one of my girls. Her name is Luna. And there she is. Yeah. Wow, I didn't realize jumping spiders could get that big. Yeah, so she's actually a full adult female already. So this is as big as they get. She's a little bit more on the older side, so you can see her looking up at you right now and just kind of checking out her surrounding. Jumping spiders are arguably, in my opinion, the cutest spiders on the planet. I agree. I used to actually be terrified of spiders, and that's what got me into the hobby, which now turned into, you know, a bit of an obsession, but for good reasons. They're honestly really, really sweet little guys. Is there a range of prices for these animals on your table? Or is it... uh, no, all the spiders are the same price. What ranges is kind of like their habitats. And we have our standard homes for 80. Uh, the large ones are 100, and their light ups are 140. But as far as like what they need, the standard size is more than enough because they like to be at the very top of the enclosure. Sure. Mm -hmm. oh, that's super cool. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Perfect. Thank you again. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, let us know you know, in the comments below what your favorite animal was. And we just might do a video here at this Daytona show with what people are buying versus what people are selling because it seems like you guys are really enjoying these videos out there from what I can tell from the view counts. So I really love doing them, walking around talking to people at the shows. It's one of my favorite things to do. So that's kind of a win-win situation in my opinion. But uh, again, comment down below, like the video if you really did, and uh, 
We'll see you on the next one. Aloha.